It's no surprise that a lot of people are getting into the world of custom mechanical keyboards, and before setting out to do so, you will most likely have a keyboard sitting right in front of you. Some not so great, and others that can be considered as premium gaming keyboards with mechanical switches on the inside. You may have had this keyboard for ages and have been wanting to upgrade to something a bit more custom. You see, I have had this old Corsair Strafe RGB mechanical keyboard for a while now. I actually bought it back in 2015, and this ultimately became a hand-me-down for my brother, which failed because he spilled coffee all over it, making it useless. But well, not entirely so. You see, the PCB is most likely foobar, but there are two things that you can salvage in a scenario like this. The switches and the keycaps, which you can use if you're on a budget, but more on that later. There is a catch though. So you see, most keyboards from gaming companies will have the switches soldered onto the PCB, meaning you'll have to manually go through and desolder all of the switches. I mean, who has the time to do that? So I decided to set out live on twitch.tv slash oyatsrob to take my old keyboard apart and do a bit of grave robbing. I, by all means, am not an expert at desoldering, and I have to preface that this is my second time ever doing this. If you do repeat the steps in this video, I have to disclaim that you should use a soldering iron at your own risk. They are hot instruments that can cause severe burns if misused. Please use a soldering iron in a well-ventilated area because of the fumes caused when you heat up solder. If you do set out to do this, you do need a few things. You'll need a soldering iron, some solder, and a solder sucker like this. This is the Engineer SSO2, which is about 20 quid, and I'll leave an affiliate link in the description if you want to pick one up for yourself. The sound it makes, though, very satisfying. Now, there are also a lot of tutorials out there to show you how to desolder. I will not go through this in this video, but please do be careful when doing this. You will need a lot of time patience and perseverance to do this. Overall, it took me about five hours to get all 110 switches out of my old keyboard. So what switches did I get out of doing all of that work? I got Cherry MX RGB switches, which is a linear switch with 45 grams of actuation force that every gaming keyboard under the big name brands had for years, unless you're a Razer fan. Here's how they sound in my QK65. There are two words that come to mind. They are deep and scratchy. The switches do sound good, however, they sound pingy because of the springs and scratchy, which a lot of people have noted online about Cherry MX switches overall. So what can you do to try and improve the sound of the switches you just got from your old keyboard? lubing. If you're new to this rabbit hole of a hobby, lubing mechanical keyboard switches reduces the friction between the moving parts of the switch, improving the perceived sound from each keystroke. MX switches are typically made up of five parts, the top housing, the stem, the bottom housing, spring, and metal contact leads. There are a multitude of tutorials out there on YouTube that offer pretty solid advice when it comes to consistent hand lubing, but I think I can offer some advice when it comes to the subject. For safety reasons, if you do plan to open up your switches for hand looping purposes, I do recommend getting a switch opener. You want to get one that matches the amount of legs that are on the side of your switch. In this case, mine has four, but there are other ones like kale switches that come with two broad legs. So just make sure that you get the correct opener for the switches that you intend to open up. In my opinion, the parts that you should lube are the stem, the spring, and the bottom housing for consistency. Whilst you could lube the top housing and the metal contact leaves, you do run the risk of over lubing the switch switches, which means that they can become mushy feeling or sluggish and sometimes can become unresponsive. Now you would use two different loops, one for the stem and bottom housing and then one for the springs. Because I have linear switches, I'm going to go ahead and use the Crytox GPL 205G0. It's a Teflon based lubricant, which is the go-to for linear switches because they have a smooth feel and medium viscosity. I'll briefly touch on what you should use for the other types of switches as well. For tactile switches like Cherry MX Browns, I do recommend using 
using Triposis 3204, which is a lighter lubricant than Crytox GPL 205G0, and avoid lubing the legs if you're using a brush by hand. For clicky switches, you can use Crytox GPL 105, again being cautious not to lube the click jacket or the click bar when lubing by hand. Now for the springs, we're going to use Crytox GPL 105, which is ideal for its high viscosity, removing the pinging sound that you can get from springs. Lastly, you'll need a painter's brush, ideally a size 0 or a 1, to apply the lube on the bottom housing or on the tactile or clicky stem. We have another method which I'll discuss for linear switches. So let's get to lubing. Lubing is really simple. You just open up the switches and separate out the four parts that you can see in front of you, that being the top housing, the stem, the spring, and the bottom housing. You'll need to open up as many switches as you'll need to fill out your keyboard, in my case, 70. So the stems and the springs go into two separate Ziploc bags. I'm going to bag lube both the springs and the stems separately. In the stem bag, I'm going to put a line of 205G0 inside and a few drops of 105. I'm going to leave a bit of air in there and then I'm going to close it all up and then I'm going to shake the bag anywhere between 30 to 60 seconds. And then I'm going to open up the bag, getting all the air out and massage the stems on the sides of the bag just to make it nice and consistent. Finally, remove the stems and separate them out. In the spring bag, I'm only going to put in a few drops of GPL 105 and again, repeat the process where I shake the bag for 60 seconds and then massage it out for the last 10 and make sure to separate them out. I actually recommend using two pairs of tweezers to separate out the springs. Just to reiterate, for lubing the other types of stems, do go back and listen to what I said about those. To lube the bottom housing, you take your brush and make sure there's barely enough lube on there to make it white in appearance, more so clear. And then you're going to take one side of the brush, take one of those side rails and brush it twice. You're then going to flip the brush and do the other side rail and brush it twice. You're then going to take that same brush and just swirl around that central pole until it covers the bottom. I usually do like maybe six rotations on that. Don't poke the brush into the hole. It just makes it really mushy. Don't do that. Once all the bottom housings have lubed, you can put the springs onto the bottom housing, then put the stem onto the spring and make sure that those legs that I pointed out earlier are facing the metal contact leaves. Now, there's a great tip you can do when reassembling is putting the top housing and making sure that the solid side of that top housing is facing where the legs go because that's where the metal contact leaves go. Everything should just click right back into place. Make sure that once it does click back into place that everything is completely flush on both sides. So now that we did all of that, let's listen to see how the sound is improved thanks to all of that hand lubing. Holistically, the switches here sound less pingy and slightly deeper. However, the scratchiness as described earlier is still prominent in the feel due to the switch materials inside the cherry switches. Once these switches are broken in, however, this can subside from what I've read online. Now, speaking of the keycaps that you salvaged from your old keyboard, you can use them, yes, but you have to pay attention to the keyboard layout that you are using. For example, if you're using a TKL keyboard, most of those are going to work. But if you're using a 60 I would be cautious about the layout there, or 65% because that uses a 1.75U right shift. Now to summarize, the whole point of this video is to encourage reusing and recycling your old keyboard, unless you plan to donate it or give it away to someone who could use it. It is a great way to breathe new life into something that otherwise would have just been thrown in a trash. I hope this video has been somewhat informative, and if you'd like to see more content, hit the subscribe button and make sure you let me know what you think in the comments right below that like button. Have a fun one.